She's the ultimate treasure hunter and gunslinger extraordinaire, the legendary Tomb Raider herself, Lara Croft. She's always been the most competent person in the room, but what was she like before that? Well, Tomb Raider's Survivor Timeline has the answer. The Survivor Timeline consists of the newest set of Tomb Raider games. Not the pointy polygons from our nostalgic past, love those, but the 2013 Tomb Raider reboot and its two sequels, Rise of the Tomb Raider and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So let's watch Lara go from a naive college grad to a seasoned survivor. The Croft Family and Lara's Early Life Lara Croft is born February of 1992 and is the only child of Richard and Amelia Croft. She spends her early years with her doting parents, her mother in particular. Tragically, Lady Croft dies in a plane crash. As a result, Lord Croft becomes obsessed with finding the key to immortality and starts neglecting Lara. So she begins to act out, even going as far as locking the family butler Winston in the freezer. As an avid reader, Lara craves adventure, so Lord Croft would sometimes take her with him on expeditions. During one such expedition, Lara finds a jade trinket. She goes to show her dad, but he's too busy with a phone call. So she rushes over to Captain Conrad Roth, Richard's guide and bodyguard, to show him instead. He makes the pendant into a necklace, which Lara happily wears. Lara and her father continue to grow distant, until one day in her teens, they get into a massive argument. Later that same day, Lara hears a gunshot from her father's study and finds him there dead, apparently having committed suicide. With Lara orphaned, Conrad Roth steps in to care for her and they develop a father-daughter relationship. However, his work keeps him away for long periods of time and Lara becomes introverted for most of her adolescence. Lara starts college at the University College London, working multiple jobs to pay her tuition and rent. While at UCL, she meets fellow student and aspiring filmmaker Samantha Nishimura. The two become best friends and Samantha helps Lara come out of her introverted shell. Expedition to Yamatai, Tomb Raider 2013 not long after Lara graduates, Conrad Roth gets commissioned for the archaeological reality show Whitman's World, hosted by James Whitman. Knowing Lara could be a good asset, Roth recruits her as a member of his personal crew on the Endurance. Other members of the expedition include Lara's friend Sam Nishimura, ship technician Alex Weiss, mechanic Jocelyn Reyes, cook Jonah Maiva, and helmsman Angus Grimaldi, aka Grim. They're all out to find the lost kingdom of Yamatai. At Lara's suggestion, and against James Whitman's advice, the expedition travels east of Japan to the Dragon's Triangle. The ship gets caught in a violent storm, stranding the surviving crew on a remote island. After escaping one of the natives, Lara tries to locate the other crew members. Along the way, Lara comes across strange carvings and the remains of ritual sacrifices, evidence that the island is fully inhabited. After some searching, Lara finds Sam along with a man named Matthias, who claims to be another passenger. However, while Sam tells Matthias about the legend of the Sun Queen Himiko, Lara passes out. When she comes to, they're both gone. After reuniting with the other survivors, Lara and Whitman search for Roth while the rest of the group sets out to find Sam and Matthias. Lara and Whitman discover that the inhabitants of the island worship Himiko, which means they've found Yamatai. A party of islanders capture them and take them to one of their settlements, revealing that several other survivors have also been imprisoned. When they start trying to escape, the islanders kill several of them. Lara gets separated from Whitman in the scuffle, only to run into one of the islander leaders. She's forced to kill him in self-defense, and so, the ruthless Tomb Raider begins to form. Lara fends off the rest of the islanders and finds Roth injured in a nearby abandoned village. She uses Roth's survival equipment to make her way to a communications relay at the top of the mountain. There she hails a plane sent to search for them and even sets a signal fire. But just then, a storm materializes out of nowhere and strikes down the aircraft. And even more spookily, a loud voice says, no one leaves in Japanese. Clearly, the island refuses to let them go. Alex and Reyes contact Lara to tell her that Sam has been kidnapped by the island's inhabitants, a violent cult called the Solare Brotherhood. Lara tries to rescue Sam, but Matthias stops her. He's actually the leader of the Solare Brotherhood. But then, she's saved by a pack of strange, samurai-looking creatures called Oni. The Oni take Lara up to a monastery far in the mountains, but unsurprisingly, Lara escapes them too. She stumbles into a ritual chamber and learns that, according to a Solari folklore, a fire ritual is used to choose the Sun Queen's successor. Sam contacts Lara and tells her that the cult is going to put her through the ritual. Lara fights her way back to the fortress where Sam is being kept and meets up with Grimm, but the Solari intervene and threaten his life. Grimm gets killed in the ensuing fight, and Lara barely survives thanks to Roth's help. She infiltrates the palace, but she's too late. Matthias puts Sam through the fire ritual, but Sam doesn't burn. Instead, a gust of wind puts the flames out, confirming that Sam is the rightful successor. Once again, Lara escapes captivity, but doubles back to help the other survivors who got captured trying to reach Sam. She and Whitman help rescue Sam and the others while Roth commandeers a helicopter for their escape. 
Lara knows what happened last time they tried escaping by air. So she tries to force the helicopter pilot to land, but of course, a second storm brews and strikes it down. Matthias and the Solari cult arrive on the scene and Roth gives his life to protect Lara. After mourning his death and evading capture, Lara meets with the other survivors, who have secured a boat to escape on. Whitman joins them as well, but Lara suspects that he's working with the Solari. Trouble is, the boat needs to be repaired, so Lara travels to the wreck of the Endurance to meet with Alex Weiss. He's already there trying to salvage the necessary tools. She finds Alex trapped underneath the wreckage, but the Solari attack as she tries to free him. In an act of bravery, Alex triggers the explosion that would kill both the cultists and himself so that Lara could escape with the tools. Lara pushes past her grief and explores the island further, finding a tomb on the island's coast containing the remains of a samurai who had committed seppuku. According to a message left by the samurai, the Sun Queen's intended successor had taken her own life to prevent herself from receiving the power. The queen was trapped in her body after her death and her rage manifested as the island's storms. That's Yamatai's real secret. The ascension ceremony isn't meant to crown a new queen, but instead to transfer the original Sun Queen's soul, destroying the host's soul in the process. Knowing the real danger that Samantha's in, Lara returns to the survivors on the beach. Unfortunately, she was right about Whitman. He betrays them by handing Sam over to Matthias. Lara, Jonah, and Reyes pursue Whitman and the cultists, arriving just in time for Lara to see Whitman killed by the Oni. She fights through the Queen's guards and sees Matthias begin the ritual. Lara kills Matthias by shooting him off the roof of the monastery using, what else, a pair of pistols. From there, she destroys Himiko's remains to save Sam. With the storms finally dispersing, Lara, Sam, Reyes, and Jonah get picked up by a cargo ship to leave the island. London and the reveal of the Trinity, Rise of the Tomb Raider a year after the Yamatai expedition, Lara's back in London, struggling to explain her experiences on the island and suffering from PTSD. She turns to her father's research on the city of Kitesh for answers. On one rainy evening, she passes by her father's old apartment and sees there's somebody with a flashlight inside. Naturally, she decides to investigate. Turns out this mysterious visitor found a recorded message by Richard Croft. Richard said that he'd found another clue in his search for the mystery of immortality, but he was being stalked by a violent group called Trinity that aimed to rule humanity. The intruder flees once Lara enters the room, so she inspects the area for any clues. When the door opens again, Lara has an ax at the ready, but it was only her father's girlfriend, Anna. Lara tells her that she had a potential location for the prophet's tomb, which Richard Croft believed was a clue to immortality. Anna doesn't believe in immortality or anything like that, but Lara thinks her father's search was worthwhile. After what she'd seen on Yamata, Lara figures anything is possible, so she heads to Syria to find the Prophet's Tomb. The Prophet's Tomb and the Croft Legacy, Rise of the Tomb Raider Lara travels to the forgotten cities in the Syrian desert, hiring a driver to take her into a war zone. A Trinity chopper zooms in and fires at them, crashing the vehicle and killing the driver. Lara finds a secret entrance in the nearby cliffs that leads to the Prophet's tomb. After evading the various booby traps in the area, she finds the shrine. But when she opens it, it's empty and the Trinity forces storm the place, led by a man named Constantine. He doesn't believe the tomb is empty and tries to kill Lara, but she activates the explosives that Trinity had set, causing the cavern to collapse and killing most of the Trinity members there. Lara escapes and notices a mysterious cross insignia engraved on the floor on her way out. It reminds her of a book on Russian religious history in her father's study. When Lara gets back to London, she does some research and learns about an artifact called the Divine Source that was rumored to grant immortality, exactly what her father had been looking for. Her friend Jonah isn't sure it even exists, but then a Trinity assassin breaks into the manor and steals the book. So Lara and Jonah go to Siberia. After an avalanche separates her and Jonah, Lara forages for resources to build shelter. She stumbles upon a base of operations that Trinity had made in their search for the city of Katesh. In her attempt to retrieve the stolen book, Lara gets caught and imprisoned alongside Anna. Constantine strangles Anna to coerce to get any info he can about Katesh and the Divine Source from Lara. Unfortunately, Lara doesn't know much of anything about them. Instead, Anna reveals that Constantine was her brother and that she works for Trinity. She asks Lara to join them, but Lara refuses, so she gets thrown into the Gulag cells. There, Lara meets a man named Jacob. Trinity slaughtered his people, justifying their actions as divine will. Together, they manage to escape. After he saves her life, she agrees to help him and his people repel Trinity. The two of them reach the Valley of the Remnant, and Lara learns that the group Jacob leads are descendants of the Prophet's ancient followers. Trinity continues to attack, and Lara discovers that Anna is suffering from a terminal illness. She's trying to find the Divine Source to cure herself. 
Despite Jacob's warnings, Lara continues to search for an artifact known as the Atlas that would show her the way to Katesh. Lara finds the Atlas beneath a ruined cathedral, but guardians called the Deathless Ones attack her. She narrowly escapes and later reunites with Jonah, who's been found by the remnant sometime before. But Trinity has been following them, so they return to attack the valley and take the Atlas. In the process, they capture Jonah and shoot Jacob. Constantine then mortally wounds Jonah before Lara can rescue him. But Jacob heals him. Turns out, he's the prophet, and the divine source made him immortal. Trinity advances on the glacier over Katesh, forcing Lara to enter the city using a more dangerous route. Through the journals of a Trinity agent, she learns the truth about the divine source. It bestows immortality, but at the cost of a person's self. Trinity enters the chamber that contains the divine source, and Lara fights her way to them and comes face to face with Constantine. After a harsh battle, Lara comes out victorious, but before Constantine dies, he confesses that Lara's father didn't commit suicide. Trinity assassinated him. Before Lara can stop her, Anna retrieves the divine source so she can use it for herself. Lara tries to reason with her, but it's no use. Anna activates the divine source, but its power overwhelms her. Furious and wanting answers, Lara asks Anna if she killed Richard Croft herself. Anna denies it, but does admit that she took orders from Trinity. Before she can reveal anything else, a sniper shot rings out, killing her. Finally free of anyone trying to stop her, Lara smashes the source to pieces. This kills the Deathless Ones, but also takes away Jacob's immortality. Jacob faces his death with dignity, assuring Lara that she made a difference before peacefully disintegrating. The Wicked Veil and the Super Soldier Pathogen, Baba Yaga DLC and Cold Darkness Awakened DLC. Sometime after the expedition to the Prophet's tomb, Lara explores a disturbance in a Soviet mine. She fights off a Trinity patrol and finds a young woman named Nadia hiding in a sawmill. Nadia and her family are members of a remnant village, and she's looking for her grandfather, Ivan. Ivan had disappeared two days earlier while trying to enter the Wicked Vale. Nadia tells Lara that the Vale is haunted by the folkloric witch, Baba Yaga. But Lara's pretty skeptical. Nonetheless, she agrees to enter the Vale and find Nadia's grandfather. Of course, Lara's trip into the valley goes south fast. She's exposed to a rare hallucinogenic pollen, which disorients her with visions of her father's death. Even worse, Baba Yaga, who is very real, attacks her with a pack of unnatural wolves. Lara barely escapes with her life, making her way to a small Soviet-era outpost. The outpost holds evidence of a secret Soviet project to weaponize that same pollen that Lara had been infected with. But the whole project ended with some of the researchers succumbing to their hallucinations. One of the researchers, Serafima, had harnessed the pollen and made an antidote for it, but had kept it away from the military. So Nadia helps Lara synthesize the antidote from Serafima's recipe, and they both return to the veil. The antidote helps Lara resist the pollen's effects, and she finds Ivan injured at the entrance to Baba Yaga's lair. Lara can't leave the veil while the witch is in control, so she battles battles Baba Yaga and destroys the pollen source. But it turns out that Baba Yaga was actually the researcher Serafima the whole time. Serafima had been led to believe that her husband and granddaughter, who were actually Ivan and Nadia, were dead. And so she used the pollen to pose as Baba Yaga and torment her captors. With the immediate threat destroyed and Nadia's family reunited, Lara leaves the veil. From there, she goes on to explore a decommissioned Soviet weapons bunker that had been breached by a Trinity patrol. Trinity had inadvertently released a dangerous pathogen into the air. That Baba Yaga pollen was bad, but this virus puts people in a zombie-like state. Men are especially vulnerable because of how it affects adrenaline and testosterone production. A Soviet researcher was using the pathogen in super soldier experiments, but died after accidentally releasing it. Now it's up to Lara to find and destroy the source of the virus before it contaminates the entire valley. Nadia and Jacob's daughter, Sophia, provide Lara air support from a helicopter while she tries to find the source. The plan is to channel the pathogen from three of the towers in the building into its central tower. Then they can detonate it and burn off the toxin. Lara fights off waves of infected soldiers and triggers a massive explosion, leaping from the tower and landing on the helicopter by the skin of her teeth. Lara, Nadia, and Sophia fly to safety, satisfied that they've saved the day. Too bad a Trinity agent escaped with a sample of the pathogen before the bunker blew up. Return to Croft Manor and Family Secrets, Blood Ties DLC. After her adventures in Russia, Lara returns to England to visit her family home for the first time in years. She's not just feeling homesick, though. She's out to find the cross she'd seen somewhere in her father's research. Lara gets a letter from her uncle Atlas, stating that she has no claim to her family's manor. Apparently, no will had been made, and because her mother Amelia was never officially confirmed dead, Lara is forced out of her childhood home. Still, Lara believes her father did make a will. It's just locked in a safe. 
She finds a note with clues about the combination and begins searching. Along the way, Lara learned that Richard Croft had found his wife's body and brought it home to resurrect her. But despite all of his efforts, he couldn't figure out a way to bring her back. Once Lara gets to the safe, she doesn't find a will. Instead, there's a sheet of paper that leads her to a hidden lab containing her father's research. And then, because Richard Croft never wanted to make things easy, Lara finds a final clue in the lab that leads her to a tomb on the manor grounds, the tomb of Amelia Croft. After reading a heartfelt note from her mother, Lara has the grave verified to legally declare Amelia Croft's death. Now, Lara is in full control of her family's assets. The Dagger of Shockshell and the City of Paititi Shadow of the Tomb Raider Two months after the events in Syria, Lara and Jonah track down a Trinity cell to Cozumel, Mexico. Pedro Dominguez is running things there as the head of Trinity's High Council. Lara slips into the nearby tombs and finds a temple containing a mysterious artifact, the Dagger of Shockshell. There's also references to a hidden city and some apocalyptic event, but <laughs> whatever. Lara ignores the scribbles on the wall and takes the dagger before Trinity could. Like clockwork, Dominguez catches her and warns her that taking the dagger triggers the world-ending cleansing rituals. Then he takes the dagger from Lara, and she and Jonah barely escape, evading a massive tsunami that destroys Cozumel. Even though Jonah's kinda freaked out by Lara's actions, he joins her as they chase Dominguez to the Amazon. After their plane crashes in Peru, they find the hidden city from the ruins' murals, Paititi. The two explore some nearby tombs and learn that if the dagger was used to stab an artifact called the Silver Box of Eshel, the wielder would be granted the power to stop the cleansing. After that, Lara sees Trinity soldiers get slaughtered by humanoid monsters called Yeshel and saves a boy named Etsli. Turns out his mom, Unoratu, is the queen of Paititi, so she brings Lara and Jonah into the city. Then, they learn a whole bunch of stuff about Dominguez. His real name is Amaru, and he's the leader of a cult dedicated to the god Kukulkan. When he was a kid, Trinity kidnapped and brainwashed him. Oh, and he's also Unaratu's brother-in-law. Lara looks for the box of Eshel, but it's missing. Trinity has it, and Unaratu gets captured trying to take it back. Lara infiltrates the Kukulkan's cult's temple and eavesdrops on Amaru. He tells Unaratu that the box was hidden by a missionary named Andreas Lopez during the Spanish conquest. Lara saves Unaratu, but then they learn that Amaru basically has no clue what he's doing. Yeah, he acts all confident, but he doesn't actually understand the ritual. Rather than using the power of the god Kukulkan to stop the cleansing, the ritual would instead sacrifice him. Before they can do anything about it, Amaru's second-in-command, Rourke, shoots Unaratu. With her dying breath, she implores Lara to resist the allure of the box of Ishel. Rourke attacks Lara and Jonah next, separating them as they escape Paititi. Lara assumes Jonah got killed, so she destroys the nearby oil refinery, killing nearly everyone in it, except for Rourke. Thing is, Jonah's alive, and once Lara reunites with him, she almost completely breaks down. Jonah calms her, and together, they track the box of Ishel to a secret catacomb under the church. They finally reach Lopez's tomb and the box, but Amaru catches up with them and forces Lara to surrender. He admits he was the one who ordered Richard Croft's death to prevent him from finding the secrets of Paititi. Amaru then leaves Lara and Jonah in the hands of the Third Cataclysm, a massive earthquake that causes a landslide and destroys Lopez's mission. But Lara and Jonah escape, as always. When they get back to Paititi, Lara and Jonah help the newly crowned King Etsli lead an attack on the underground temple where Amaru's holding the cleansing ceremony. Trinity cuts off the majority of Paititi's forces, leaving Lara to press on alone. She encounters the Yashel again and convinces their leader, Crimson Fire, to help her stop Amaru. The Yashel take out Rourke and the Trinity Council while Lara goes to the summit, but she doesn't get there in time to stop Amaru from piercing the box with the dagger. Amaru absorbs Kukulkan's power, but Lara defeats him in a long, difficult battle. Amaru accepts defeat and transfers the power of Kukulkan to Lara. With the power of a literal god coursing through her, Lara is tempted to use the box of Eshel to revive her parents. But just like Unaratu requested, she overcomes the temptation and lets Crimson Fire stab her with the dagger, sacrificing Kukulkan and stopping the cleansing. With the threat finally vanquished, Unaratu rests in peace, and Jonah takes a well-deserved vacation, and Lara stays in Paititi to help the young King Etsli restore the city. And that's just Lara's origin story. Before we know it, Lara will be gallivanting off to some other country to uncover more long-buried secrets. Until next time, I'm Sydney with The Leaderboard. Thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe to The Leaderboard. We're 1 million players and counting.